Hey, here we are guys for another Paleo Cooking Frenzy and today we're going to focus on another Paleo staple and that is ground fed beef in the form of Paleo burgers. Now we're going to do the burgers open today, we're not going to use any bun or anything non-Paleo today. We're going to focus on the, a lovely huge kilo or two pound uh, load of uh, grass fed free range beef. We've also got uh, a couple of eggs to bind it all together, uh, some onions to throw in there, some Dijon and some whole green mustard. We've got paprika, we've got chili powder, the traditional and normal, as usual, salt and pepper, and some grass-fed butter. So this one actually is really, really simple to throw together. And again, all of this ingredients, apart from the beef, really, or in actual fact, you should have the beef stored away in your freezer. So it's really simple to throw together in a short space of time. What is the other benefit? Make extra. Always cook up a load of these and freeze as many as you can. These are great because you can use them at breakfast, you can use them in your fod box, and you can also use them for the evening. Okay, so let's get on with the recipe. First off, you wanna just uh, soften these uh, onions to be able to put that in and mix it with the beef. So first up, we're just gonna sling a bit of grass-fed butter into the pan. Delicious. Okay, we're gonna chop up two Onions, I prefer red purely because of the flavor. And you want to dice these up nice and small. If you want to learn more about dicing, then take a look on the website for that specific video. But just for now, to make it nice and quick, let's chop this up nice and fine. Nice fine chunks of this, gorgeous. Okay, throw that into the pan and we just want to soften these up really. Um, and while they're softening, we're gonna mix the rest of the ingredients together. So that's two red onions go into the pan first. Give them a bit of a whiz round. Doesn't need to go too high, just a nice low heat. Get some butter on all of those and just let them soften while we're mixing the rest of that ingredients together. Slightly. Okay, while that's doing, drag over your nice big pot. You can use absolutely anything for this, but just make sure it's nice and big. So first off, in goes the beef into that pot. Okay, what we wanna do is crack a couple of eggs. Into that. easy. Throw all your junk in one place, keep the place nice and tidy. And just give those a nice quick mix up there. Real easy, nice little flick of the wrist. Don't need to worry too much because again we're going to get down and dirty with this and we're going to use our hands, make sure you wash your hands always before you start cooking because I like to really rough it and get involved with the meat, feel what's going on. Okay, pour that in, this is going to hold it all together. Okay, keep that to one side. Now in goes the Dijon, sorry the whole grain, two tablespoons and two tablespoons of Dijon. This adds an immense amount of flavour, so really, really important. Not too strong of flavours, but those two together worked really, really well. In goes one teaspoon of paprika and one teaspoon of chilli powder. How many is this going to serve, Justin? A lot. <laughs> Look at all that beef. We're looking at about probably about nine patties, but obviously, as usual, it depends on how much you've you've made you make. All right, but that should make about eight or nine beef patties. Okay. Before we do that, I'm just going to give this a move around here. Make sure they're softening up nicely. While we're doing that, let's just crank that heat up just a little bit more. Okay. While that's doing, we're going to get involved with this. We're going to get hands in. Don't worry about it. We're just going to get it right in there and mix 
all of this ingredients in there together. And I can really smell that beef and the uh, whole grain mustard. It's going to give it an immense amount of flavour. So move those thumbs through like that, holding onto it, moving it through all the way around. You can spin the bowl around if you like at the same time, but just really move it all around. You want to get this ingredients right through as your hands go in there. Give it a squeeze, let it move through those fingers. Fantastic. These are gorgeous. How hot are these going to be, Justin? It's fairly hot or? No, I've just used a teaspoon of chilli and obviously you can adjust that to your um, own personal taste. Obviously I've gone fairly mild on these, uh, but you know, you like your chilli, crank it up a bit. It's just a case of just multiplying that ingredients. I personally, for me, love the flavour of that whole grain mustard and those mustards to come through on this because that's really what gives it that flavour. And that is really, look at this, nice and pink. Look at that and you can see all of that whole grain going straight the way through that. Now, okay, let's give this another shake around. You can just see those starting to brown off there and they're nice and soft, which is fantastic. Some people prefer to just throw this in straight away. I prefer to give them a nice bit of a uh, soften through. They do cook when they're in there, but let's just give them a little bit of a soften. Make sure, because there's nothing worse than having a beautifully cooked burger, but uh, chomping through some raw onion halfway through it. Okay, let's just give it a bit more heat. Gorgeous, this. Coming on. This is so, so simple. When we add the onions, that's the point that we're going to add the salt and the pepper to taste. Make sure you're using Celtic sea salt or Himalayan crystal salt. The reason is salt should be pink, grey or beige. If it's white, then it's processed and you do not want to use it. It will be devoid of all its beneficial uh, minerals. Interestingly with salt, actually if you get the natural stuff like the Himalayan crystal salt which is pink or the Celtic sea salt which tends to be a greyer or a beige colour, um, if you were to analyse that it would actually be very similar in its mineral makeup to amniotic fluid which is actually where we spent the first nine months of our lives obviously so that's how beneficial this can be. So salt is not bad because not all salt was created equal. Right, let's get this nicely browned, nice and soft. Let's get that into that beef there and the rest of the ingredients. Okay, put that to one side and in goes a nice pinch of salt, probably a couple actually I'm gonna put in. And some ground pepper. Beef and pepper go amazing together. Okay, and again, we just want to get our hands in there. Flip it over first because those onions are going to be hot. Okay, so get that cold beef on top and then it won't burn you. Okay, and again, really get that. Make sure all of that onion is really mixed through. Okay, again, using the thumbs to mix all that through, spinning it around. Smells gorgeous, absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Amazing. Now we are ready to start cooking these bad boys. So what we want to do, get the pan back on, give it some grass fed butter in there, slam that on, here we go, crank up the heat. And we probably want this at about a medium to high to start. Sear those edges and sear the outside. And we probably want to be getting about four or five patties into a pan this size at a time. Remember, you could do the first batch to freeze and then the second batch to eat so that they're nice and hot for when you start. Okay, up to a seven. Just starting to go. What you want to do then is tease a portion away, okay, 
grab that Got nice chunky you can put the uh, onion less chunky for yourself I prefer it all nice and chunky okay and just into a patty that size all right nice and chunky that's how I prefer it personally but don't feel restricted do it how you want start in a sizzle lovely okay into a ball first give them a squash in it goes tease one away into a ball give it a squash in it goes I think we'll probably go with about four on this one some butter underneath to make sure they're not sticking. Up to one side and we are cooking. Beautiful. Just make sure they're not sticking. It starts to smoke. You can actually at this point now start to turn that heat down just a little down to a medium and let that cook all the way through. Obviously this is beef. Now, if you've let it rest, as you should do, then there's no reason why you can't have these to your liking. Okay, so medium, absolutely fine for a burger. Rare, no problem. Today, we are gonna go for quite a well done burger today. So that it's cooked through. Remember, I've cooked the onions before as well. So that allows me to have them in a rare state because they've been cooked before. Okay, now with the burger, you probably want to turn them over a little bit more often than you normally would do with a steak. And you can see, look. That we few, uh, flip those a few times. Now is the time to remove them from the heat. To one side, the heat from the pan will still go through there. Now's the time to think about this being a mega topped open PIB burger. So, want some onion rings? Red onion always works best. And you want to go across the onion like that so you're producing some rings and just pop those out. Awesome. Also, looks much, much better. All that pink coming through from the red onion. Okay. Beef tomato, only one slice per burger. Take off the top, that's one side, and a nice big slice with a sharp knife all the way through, not too thick. And that will go one on top of each burger. And we are going to go for avocado. Again, if you want to learn more about how to open an avocado, take a look on the website, do a search, and you'll be shown how to open a avocado. What we want to do is have a couple of feathers of that. So we're going to come in at a nice angle. And this is going to be delicious. All this great essential fat from that avocado. So there's our toppings. And I have got some lovely outdoor reared pre-cooked crispy bacon. Outdoor reared. Beautiful. Grab a plate. Let's make this look fantastic. Take a burger, place it on. On goes your tomato, straight on top. On goes the avocado, and just layer that across, feathered across, and last but not least, a few gorgeous rings of onion and you are set for a gorgeous meal remember to freeze those extras look at that my mouth is absolutely watering now beautiful open burger ready for the taking and also have some frozen ready to go you can reheat these at any time remember for breakfast for lunch or 
for your evening meal. And these work at every single meal. Absolutely fantastic. I will see you again in the meantime. Enjoy your PIB open top burger.